Hello there, everyone, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in the Pax Britannica Mod for Hearts of Iron Farm, which we're playing as the United Commonwealth of America. But we're doing things here that will uh, make it so that we change ideologies, because right now we're a bunch of uh, conservatives here, but we're not going to stay conservative for very long. But we got to talk about Anglo-American settlers rise up in Texas. The United Commonwealth is currently facing a dilemma as news has arrived of American settlers in the Republic of Tejas, rising up against the local government and fighting for independence. The United Commonwealth must now decide whether to provide to the settlers remain neutral. The situation is complicated as the United Commonwealth has a delicate relationship with the Republic of Tejas, which it shares its border with. On one hand, supports the settlers, supporting them, could lead to a significant increase in tensions between the United Commonwealth and the Republic of Tejas, potentially leading to armed conflict. On the other hand, remaining neutral could result in the loss of potential allies and trade partners if settlers successfully achieve independence. The government of the United Commonwealth is currently discussing and weighing their options to determine the best course of action to take in the sensitive matter. Offer them support and support or declare neutrality. Intervene more directly in Texas should the situation allow it. Offer them our support. So, to basically the route we're going down, we have Calvin Coolidge leading here, but we've got a very American kind of crisis, which you're going to need this one, please, good to have, but crushing, Russian and crush solution. We cannot allow such an organized display of defiance against the government to continue without any punishment. The damage to the reputation would be massive and the economic cost of meeting their demands are too large. We cannot concede to them all. Instead, we must respond in force, fully mobilize the police and military to respond. So called bonus march will be halted with bullets and batons, drive them budgets and bills. Kick down the gates. The Jacobin menace hides in our universities, factories, and even our walls. We cannot tolerate these bonus loving with Jacobins spreading propaganda. Thus, it's imperative that we get ahead of these radicals and start flushing them out of their hideouts with raids, arrests, and intimidations. Get them behind bars or behind our administration. It's all for time. Things are getting dicey, and we all have to solve these negotiations as much as possible. The numbers just won't add up. Our National Guard won't be ready in time at the current pace of discussion, so we'll just find anything to keep the talks going. Up, up to speech, retreating, and pivoting, and small talks to keep us from reaching the end of the talks too early and give our military enough time to mobilize and mobilize Rampies and MHG. The Royal American Mounted Police and have a reputation for being friendly and lenient, but as the crisis rages, it's time we shape the Rampies in a force worth fearing. Some may say that giving a police military grid weaponry is a step too far, but it is time to call upon a mounted police to help defend against the crisis and escalation dominance. It's time for decisive actions now. Our administration has thus far been doing what it can to solve the crisis at hand, but it now decides the boot to crush the Jacobin Terrace is needed. Our forces are mustering, and our will is undefeatable, and our cause is just. Now it's time to strike. Nice. Um, gas as our weapon. Ooh. Gas assault. Gas as our shield. Emphasize static defense, which, I mean, we could, but I don't like that one as much. I always prefer United Arms Doctrine. The United Commonwealth military is planning to focus on the doctrine of combined arms, with emphasis uh, uh, emphasizes the integration of different combat combat arms and unified force on the battlefield. The military is aiming to create a more effective and efficient fighting force by combining infantry, armored artillery, and air power. This doctrine would require extensive training, coordination, cooperation between different branches of the military, as things are going to come and explode. It does settles on the crisis. Many politicians and citizens believe that Coolidge did not do enough to address the concerns of the veterans, and his lack of action led to the violent removal of the veterans from the encampment in Philadelphia by the military. Some even call for his resignation over the matter. Coolidge has defended his actions, stating that he has to uphold the law and maintain order in the city. However, this controversy surrounding his response to the crisis has only grown, and many are calling for further investigation and accountability. The bonus army crisis remains in a stain on the Coolidge administration, and protests and unrest continue even after the end of the general crisis itself. We were prevented a revolution, and this is the thanks we get? The dead march west. The roads that many followed lay high in vicious mixtures of blood and dirt, with the occasional sight of a corpse being uh, common, the permanent spectacle for the truck. Once dawn came, everyone prepared themselves and once again followed the dirt road left by the failed settlers of the old America. For those who were too weak to continue walking, their fate was not so prestigious. They be became another figure on an already increasing list of who was dead. It was a blindly sad to see sons beg for the fathers to get up and the di uh, age divide only worsen, with much of the old laying claim to heaven or hell. Amongst the uh, red sky, a disease, rampant starvation, and a total disarray of society. From 300,000 of the initial pilgrims, only an estimated 100,000 survived. If the Commonwealth so wished to chase after us, then they would have all the directions needed. It seemed Hansel and Grell ran out of bread, but not bodies, and they had plenty of. Even when Butler proclaimed our new home, uh, all one had to do was a turn and look at those darn dirt roads to be reminded what happened. Wait, let me come too. Oh, lag it, lag it, lag it. Oh, look at this, second continental army. Patriots formed the United States of America, conquered way to the East Coast, managed the SCA's precarious situation, avenged a failed revolution, and spread the revolutionary cause globally. Second continental army's failed state, of course. Oh boy. But here we are, my friends. Butler, Bas, Mudler, Butler. Division, Tech, and Defense Corps core territory. We lose it. Thus, always the tyrants. But let's begin. They did march west. 
Our industrial revolution has failed, we must look at our wounds and rebuild our strength so that one day we may return to take what is rightfully ours. This will be no simple process, of course. Our plans have already been drawn up to expand our regional influence with the direct neighbors. More attack and more terrain or penalty reductions. Nice. Sleeping Giant, dead March West. We have one... Oh my god. Research slot. We don't even have planes. We have nothing. Butler at Militia, huh? Oh, good lord. Then March West, shocking re revelation has come from the Western Hemisphere of the Commonwealth of America that a large migration westwards occurred to what seems to be a revolutionary great trek. Reports say that many aspects of Jacobin loyalists and socialists have decided to join this great March West to establish what they call a progressive utopia of America and spread this continent across continent. Ironically, many subjects of the Commonwealth call this trek the Dead March West due to the fact that many leftist marchers have been hackled and cut down from lack of logistics, supplies, and military incursions. Ve victor. Progressive victory. Oh. Well, okay. What do we have? American Revolution, Weekly Map, plus 50, Daily Political Power Game, The Young, Old, and Bold. I like them young and bold, but Untamed Frontier, oh boy. Wow, that's a lot of less organization defense. Oh, everything's banned except the butler rats. Oh, Trekker's main continent, second in continental army's main culture. Interesting. Seminole, Old Dixie, Appalachian, and Friedman, huh? The first seeds. Ready your darn rifles. Foo, what more is there to really say? Without a stable reserve of food, it'll be even just we. We could face a catastrophic, catastrophic crisis on our hands. Luckily, most of the initial wave have brought over large amounts of various seeds and cattle. Time to put our systems to good work. Huh. Outlaw country. The original inhabitants of that room in these lands were Cantonese migrants that settled the Oregon coast, of which many turned to banditry to make ends meet. That was still roam these lands. It would be a waste to let these people simply grow old and die. Let us... Fill them with the same dreams that we have so they maybe fill in just our skills. A little in the dust. To those who may consign, we are aware of the increasing numbers of uh, celestial uh, coming into the city from the south and we're doing everything to solve the situation. The celestials who were questioned said that the country of Maizu was taken over by refugees from the east, which caused the local population to flee north. I've ordered a construction of a special district for Chinese families in the outskirts of the city to resolve the issue without disturbing the new Virginian wave life. Additionally, I've asked the government to investigate these so-called refugees from the East, find out their motives and identity. We'll update you as soon as the investigation is concluded. Sincerely, Mayor of New Libertyville, where all the roads vented, the path we walk has not. The event was written by a member of the PAX Discord, Necrosent. Oh, hello, Necrosent. Thank you. The Sleeping John, though we've exiled ourselves in the middle of butt F nowhere, the United Commonwealth, and cast poison shadow over our people and our state's very existence. Oh, nice. They know we left and we set ourselves for a new life, but if they even find out about our general whereabouts and our very survival at stake, uh, or stake, it's therefore necessary that we keep our presence unknown until we're ready to strike first or until we at the very least reach an acceptable level of readiness. The cost of the hidden high from the giant's decision equates to how many battalions you have mobilized, i.e. nine battalions equals nine political power. It's related to battalions, not divisions. If the UC discovers this one will suffer from a severe national spirit debuff that can only be removed after the UC is defeated. This basically means death. It's highly recommended that you do not spam out divisions willy nilly. Once you've conquered most of the Midwest, this began to come to an end since your existence and whereabouts will be made very clear to the UC at that point. Like prey hiding from an eagle on the hunt, any sudden movement could give our vulnerable position away. We must take great precautions the way we conduct our struggling nation, else we meet in the mouth of the predator. Every day, those darn patrols, patrols get close and closer to our homes, and we do not plan on surviving this crap storm that will be best to cover our tracks. Not doing so late to our demise, there is unfortunate truth we have to live with for now. Stabilize nation. Ooh. In these hated times, hard times, we must find control on the most dullish of activities. Small propaganda workshops will be set up across our nation in hopes of inspiring the people who cause, with a cause they have seemingly forgot about. This ain't merely a revolution, but a fight for the future of Americans' peoples. The dead march west. Our sons and daughters have made the impossible journey, and whilst our new home has been settled, the struggles have not yet ended. The roads are non-existent, our homes are mere huts, and our food reserves are depleting by the second, and yet more to come. Yet every 30 days, more butler rides will arrive, the initial waves will be too large in number, and will cause further strain towards our already alien situation. No decision will be made, uh, unless we'll all saw star to death, final few. The dirt road that leads to the sanctuary is bruised with death and dreams. The dreams of a new age, of an age of American equality, fairness, and most importantly, Jacobinism. And the death of thousands of mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, family and friends, and followers of the revolution. What is a Jacobin? Gangs of misfits, huh? Gunslingers, huh? Alright. 
Probably a pretty busy guy. Traumatized by the track. Oh god. Are they all, they're all traumatized. Okay, well. I guess I'm traumatized too. Ready your darn rifles. In this great struggle of ours, we have. There are those that we have and those that have not. There were many that had to littler to our name or legacy, but with this new lab, we brought everything in our position, mostly guns and bullets. Children of the Revolution. Just like George Washington, we face seemingly unstoppable threats, but with enough det determination and grit, we shall break those odds like a revolutionary sword. On that one that will pierce the heart of Philadelphia and bring their rock filled state crumbling down. Ooh, we're really mad power, daily pickle power. Nice. You can use kamikaze pilots. First wave. The convoy reared to a closure behind followed a huge line of hungry and tired peoples. The food situation had already begun deteriorating at this point, and the rationing had already taken effect. The streets were bad with sand, and the definition of hell seemed all too fitting for the situation to ham. Local militias, while not uttering a word of hesitance, were all to a knowledge about the current circumstances. They remained the only people able to still maintain a full belly than them and the various political leaders. Even the veterans were on the short end of the stick. The new butlerites began setting new homes and rations, and the core population looked towards them with distaste and concern. The worst had just begun. Brace yourselves. Oh boy. Our greatest struggle is this guy. We're surrounded on all sides by states that wish to see our great nation or dream with their way, but with some within these nations, there may be some convinced otherwise. They'll join us willingly or not, and then only and then will our grand American utopian dream finally start to be in barren fruit. We get war economy, which is good. Command power, forts, major general, butler. I have fallen effects for the arms for 70 days. Offensive breakthrough. A letter to your home. Well, I guess we're going to go to New Virginia. I don't know. We got big goals. That's what we got. Goals that are huge. We like them huge. Robert Wood. Huh. Children of the revolution. Children of the trees. Crush the zealous rights. Oh, tabernacle. False heirs no more. Purge. Idiocracy. The Portland Compromise. She knew Virginia greeted her man's will annex him and gain all the generals and divisions. A revolutionary state of Portland. Portland greeted her demands. We can try it. Core the state via later. We can try it. Since in New Virginia, a certain militarily shared a state's admiration for George Washington and what he represented. Should we focus on the common ground? We can convince the nations of New Virginia to peacefully join a cause. Second wave. Now, the second wave of Butler Rides arrived. The crowd that stood waiting at the make capital should make shift gates protested against the entry of more. What about her, huh? She had a system putting an old scrunched up figure. A closer inspection of the individual and old crusted face revealed itself. Well, she provide now. Added the enraged assistance as the crowd roared in unison. The old lady chorused with Butler, showing him, showing to him a small, timid boy under her arms. Now listen here, my dear son. This boy's father gave everything to the cause. He died believing in you and the revolution. Reaching out with a crooked finger, she tapped Butler's heart. If not me, she loaded the boy. She stood undisturbed at the possibility of turning back. She knew her time was near, but remained defiant at the suggestion of her grandson dying out of these wastes. Well, must look after the loyal. Only the strong are allowed. Oh, I love that idea. Only the strong are allowed. Oh, let's go with the loyal. Oh, we get one more population. Oh, we could really use more stability. Wow. Empty military position. Ooh. 14 hour workdays. God dang. Well, that's gas. We can do this one. Time will be reset. Grand offenses. We cannot afford to see our alternatives. Offensive bogged down. A new and grand campaign will see our troops march onward towards victory and our enemies shall only know death. Recruit cowboys. These lands are rich with hardened cowboys. It would be a shame uh, to see these potential recruits blend into a normal revolutionary society. Let us instead redirect these veterans of the West into a climate where they will hire or thrive. A letter to home. Dear mother, I hope you're doing well. I'm certainly not. None of us are. Our corpses trail behind us like breadcrumbs. I've not had anything to eat in a couple days. Even then, I was just a bowl of beef soup. But tasted it heavenly compared to what else we've been eating out here. The commissioner kept speaking of how we had a forge on, and in the end, our suffering would be worth it. It collapsed from the cold of a snowstorm. We didn't watch it happen, for we had to keep moving unless we suffered the same fate. The last time I heard him was when he screamed, mauled to death by wolves shortly after. I want to come home to you, to father, to all my friends, but I'm too far gone now. I can't come home. I'd, rather, I'd be shot as soon as the authorities saw me. This was maybe my last letter to you. Do you even receive it? If you don't hear from me in three weeks, I'm dead, but don't weep for me. I'll be somewhere. Love, James. Where? All the roads have ended. The path we walk is not. This event was written by a member of the Pax Discord. 
VL2291. I think you VL2291. Nice. Because we weren't new Walt and new flag audio. New flagpoles. Well, we could try this one. Similar people, similar, similar goals. New Walton is another state trying to achieve the utopian dream. However, they've been corrupted by and have come to twisted conclusions. We should ask for them and inform them that we too wish for this great utopia. One that's true to the cause. What the heck is New Walton? Third wave. Civilians first and soldiers defend them. That is a royal army vanguard of the sword of the working class. To aid in their escape. The fourth Red Army stayed. Behind to help uh, usher civilians west. The plan could hold up only for so long, though. Commonwealth forces in September our comrades in Hardin, traveling between Illinois and Mississippi. 40,000 soldiers now caught in a mousetrap. 4,000 fighters we can't afford to lose. Our relief force could be simple, we're already stretched so thin. One cynical officer suggests sending the unreliable troops in the reserves instead, but that would certainly be sending these people to their deaths. So they're most able men as a relief force. Heroes are made among the darn, send the reserves. There's nothing we do, God help them. Send them, boys. By time. The UC have come too close to our borders and sightings have become the regular. Let's act now as we die in this stupid desert. <laughs> well, we'll see. Oh, you can only be peaceful with one nation. Well, it can only be one then. There are those that reject the Jackman cause, follow and twist it. New ones drifted off to the true path of the great utopian dream. We have come crashing. Landing into a blind devotion to nature's lure, and I'll reveal to them the true threat and the way, true way to deal with it. Our demands are rejected. God dang it. The demands of annexation that we'd send uh, were rejected, of course. While our men are may already uh, be beaten entire, there are some capable of fighting. Ward is then. So be it. Oh, it'll still be peaceful then. Oh, maybe. I oh, found him. Should not have deleted that other division, but oh well. Getting misfits. Fourth wave. Third army made camp on the bank of Missouri, waiting for the river to calm down out of the night a few rain, a few nights of rain. Nearby, an encampment of Sioux watched warily of uh, the Europeans. They slowly warmed up, especially after the soldiers began trading ammo and their other supplies for food. Some started speaking about the cause and are interested in joining the cause. They, they have dedicated themselves to the march alongside us as revolutionaries. It might be worth them integrating them to society, if one can call it that. Can't take any more people, huh? Is anyone willing to build our future? Can't take any more people. This seems like it's reversed. Do we have any guns? We have a couple guns, you know what, instead. Probably right, that's six combo with the Gang of Misfits. These will be a new infantry divisions. Hold then. Base machine tool. Oh, they don't attack us, that's fine with us too. Uh, you'll go scavenger. Probably scavenger quite a few things. Oh, they have two divisions now. That's not good. I mean, if they want to attack us, I'm okay with that. Fifth wave, my god. As the sun said, the northern army made its move, consisting mostly of northerners, Borealians, and landless farmers. The caravan used a cover of darkness to get through the cold by nights. Owing, owing to capable, incapable navigators, the troops found themselves in the territory of the Confederacy. After some tense initial encounters, the commanding officer explained to the tribal elders the situation. Failing to clear the air, the tribal elders sent a message that the troops would be allowed a passage in return for compensation. Take the deal. So neither side can really win here, huh? Great. Great Balkan War, very nice. 
So Amity, not bad, not bad. Grind out that army XP, boy. Henry of Randall, hope you're learning a whole lot. Sort of ledger-like. So we got more guns. Find a wave, there we go. Well, our soldiers have arrived. Being down to the last man, the question remains why? How could the movement get to this battered level? Food supplies are scarce. Minority age or minority a minority are suggesting purge of the office of corn of undesirable elements. Someone or something has failed, so now they must pay the ultimate price. Long march is costing nearly time to purge. We're all that's left. No man left behind denounce capital's rotors. Oh man, that's a lot more stability. We're slowly building ourselves up. New aggressive soldier would be good too. Give us enough time to get enough infantry equipment in here. But it would be good. Human hill spiders, not bad. Two thousand versus thirteen thousand. Wow, that's a lot of dead guys. They've won to five divisions, so it's obviously two, but grand offensive. Limited women's rights. Now with the guys having enough equipment, we're not. can we actually win here maybe? This division will definitely be defeated enough. Should be able to do it, but you never know. You never really know. Are these considered special forces gunslingers, really? Oh. Huh. Oh. Well, we're definitely grinding out here. Did they throw another division in? Oh, that he came back. It's kind of crazy. Harry Randall. How much more manpower do they possibly have? Guns though. We're trying to get some artillery, which is good. 
You make two guns a week. Come in, if truly, that's good. Well, I guess when we get there, we get there, but... Revolutionary city of Portland? Oh, we'll probably purge idiocracy. For idiots, fools, degenerates, and the like are all through our nation. New Virginia may belong to us, but its soul is corrupt in need of a dire cleanup. A little revolutionary propaganda and forced assimilation will do just the job just fine. And then we'll do, of course, uh, this one. It can only be one. Those of the states that reject the Japanese cause, follow and twist it. New Walden has drifted out of the true path of the greatest utopian dream, and we both come crashing again in a blind devotion to the nature's lure. Or view to them that the true threat and the true way to deal with it's it. It's June 15th, 1936. That war lasted way too freaking long, but there can only be one. Um, so yeah, now we're at war again. But hopefully we can do way better than the last one we just had, because my god, that took forever. Um, but we have two divisions now, Gang of Misfits. We're doing okay. God, I hope so. Do have any other? Oh my god, they got three divisions in total. That's not good. Um, can you at least take that, maybe? Maybe? As long as these guys don't move? Uh, Cabot's Cabal. What the heck is that? Transcendentalists? Okay, well. Okay. Why not? As long as they don't move, that's all that matters to us. Guy got quite a bit of experience. So. Um, also, we were we had fear and chaos, which I don't know when that'll leave, but I just got, I missed it. So we won. New flagpoles. The anarchistic fools of New Warden at Walden have attempted to resist our the lure of a fascinating ideology, but they have ultimately failed to do so. Where they once could claim to be the vanguards of Mother Nature, they have instead quickly adopted our more streamlined views on the revolution. Now that true test of a brotherly might begins with Jacobinism and united, there remains less one less for us to worry about. Grouse are zealous, uh, zealous re religious zealots. Religion is the greatest evil of all societies. It's inherent, corrupt, and has little uh, care for the common man and woman. Religion serves only the rich and powerful. One must ask themselves if God is truly real, then why did he create all the world's torment? Torment? Torment. Not torment, but torment. Tabernacle, huh? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, boy. Okay, I'm already easy, I guess. Oh, we got plenty of guns now. That's nice. Can you guys do okay against these guys? Oh, that's freaking mountains, huh? Yeah, you're not going to win there. Go up and around, maybe. Into the desert we go. If we just take that VP, is that all we need, please? I don't want to be able to take I don't want to take humility if we have to. God dang it. We have to take it. God dang it. At least get there and then we can go there and maybe we can circle that division, maybe? Maybe. There you go. There you go. Hey, these guys aren't super strong. Nice. That'll help out. Beautiful. Hey, we finally have another division too. Look at that. Nice. Thank God. Why do we keep losing? Oh. When we do it, like I said, we do have this one. is really bad, but whatever. Place surrounded. They are entrenched, though. Midnight Massacre. We asked them, they said no. We begged them, they said no. We demanded them, they said no. We took them, they said nothing. Trekker, huh? Well, we're learning.
Pine Nut Mountains. I read Utopia. The longest time citizens of our nation haven't had a minute to relax, not even for a second to pause and collect their thoughts. It's no fault of our great regime, though. After all, these hard times demand the most from the people. But these initial struggles have finally begun to ease. Food is more preva prevalent and diverse. Morale is dedicated to relaxation. The spirits for the first time in a long time seem to be high. Let's remain wary of those who wish to see the destruction of all this progress we've made. Thank you, new flood. Oh, research slot. Oh, Libertyville, second continental army. We're getting there. Do that for now. Get a little more arty. Like a poor pile before us, we have been beaten and be uh, have been eaten, broken and have been broken. Our continental armies are tired and some rest is needed before the revolution fires up again. The morale, uh, this morale pause can be followed up with the furthering of our political goal through a temporary congress, bringing any mind that is available to the Senate of a republic and bring a people's answer to how the state must function. But well, I was given this Congress total authority over the fate of the coming Republic, and as the people gather, the Continental Army braces itself for its second chapter. The Butler Act Proclamation. Then no vote in a single party state. It's merely the Butler would be given full dictatorial powers, and Congress would be sidelined. The path eventually leads to the formation of the North American Union, the NAU, or down to the People's Council, with managed democracy. It's merely the Butler of the People's Congress. Huh. Congress with the chief total control and Butler will be the first American president. This term. This term will end with the unification of America. This path will eventually lead to the formation of the United States. Well, we'll probably go that way. As we organize ourselves towards another revolution, we must laying out, begin laying out the groundwork for the future government. While the president, of course, remains an important figure, we cannot allow them to hold too much power. If one man can control the direction of the entire nation, how are we any better than the tyrant monarchs of Europe? Congress must be the main center of government, so to be granted the freedom to represent the people fairly and justly. And ensure that no matter what, our nation will never serve the interests of a single man. Finally, another research slot. Jesus Christ. Yeah, we're, we're very far behind. This was ridiculously difficult. Ready to I should have deleted the other division, but you shouldn't need that extra division to kill everyone off. Sounds bad a fall sound over the horizon as the last stubborn holdouts of reactionaries are finally pacified, and the last of our revolution's immediate threats. However, the attitude among our comrades has greatly improved. The despair of the old and certain days of the Great March West fades away to be replaced with an atmosphere of hope. Hope for a revolution, faith in our leader, confidence in a victory among the recently liberated towns, grand artworks and revolutionary declaration patterns, the walls of every standing building, replacing whatever dreary murals that may have existed before. People, although so timid around us, seem to accept our rule over them. So even hand us gifts of food and flowers as we pass by. With liberation being so recent, their old regime's henchmen may still lurk in the shadows, plotting behind our backs and waiting to draw their daggers out. If we're to be more than a footnote in history, we have much yet to do. The list must be compiled, enemies trampled, and society remolded in our image. The utopia's inside, we only need her to seize it. Set up the ministries, oh god. Oh, nice. Expand industrial works, that'd be nice, but let's do this one first. The chaos of the March West has left the government in shambles. Most of our agencies and administrative duties are defunct and non-functional. There are a few which aren't needlessly bureaucratic and ineffective. Uh, worse still, we've yet to fully organize how to decide who will hold these positions. While it's good to have checks to make sure everything works as it's supposed to, we must work on reform and restructuring our various government ministries. In regard to how to decide what, who does what, a solution has been made clear. If we make these positions democratic, then we can allow uh, these people to decide what's best for what job. Who knows what better than the people that want than the people themselves? People's revolution. Under intense pressure. Most political adversaries and many elements of the population, Butler, conceded to grant more autonomy to the newly established Continental Congress. Like everything, like late last evening, a crowd of no more than a few thousand gathered outside of Libertyville Town Hall to hear Butler's confirmation of the recent changes to the exact extent of his wartime powers and the capacity to which Congress can influence the nation. Many minds were soundly like soothed by such an announcement and uh, occasional protests by Dehart Butler are sprinkled within the crowd by the people for the people. People's are. We'll reignite the spirit of our forefathers and relive, relive the memories of the first revolution and lead it to a glorious victory. We cannot secure freedom through words, but we must be secured through arms, and to do that we need an army. Right now, what little we have consists of local militias. Though some have called for us to centralize and professionalize our military, we cannot do this. Or without the power of the military to fall into the hand of a, few, a handful of people, we risk a revolution being betrayed. No, this will not be an army soldiers, it will be an army of the people. What we lack in men and arms, we can make up for with our spirit. Victory will be one of the people's hands. Cabinet, huh? Construction speed. Ministry of Self Reliance. Respect. 
Hard work. Social cohesion. You know, by ideology. Oh, hush campaigns. Here's the revolution that looks really cool. Washington Monument. It's better than industrial works. Though our spirits may be stronger, our industry is not. The industry of these lands we control pales in comparison to those in the West, while we'll never be able to match them with the resources we have. We're still, uh, make use of what we got. We still make use. We must clear space for more factories to supply arms for soldiers and goods for people. The factories that exist must be expanded and their output increased. If we can manage this, a revolution will have the industrial backing to win. It won't be easy, nor will it be cheap, but it'll give us the chance we need to secure victory. Nice. We got about a week left for that, so that's not bad. We're getting there. Empty military position theory, so. Nice. That's what I thought. Oh man, that's expensive. Shnikes. Fire of the steelworks. As the American Revolution turns the cogs across the continent, our domestic cogs remain rusty. Industrial output has been lagging behind without proper resources, which most importantly concludes steel. As long as we lack steel, our arms will suffer in quality and our industry will be unable to properly maintain itself, threatening the very core of the revolution, its workers. Because it has thus been signed that we expand the steel works and through our own, we own through the purchasing of a handful of new smelters from friendly nations to expand the logistical miracle that keeps the hot metal burning. So far, one of the best weapons of the Second Continental Army has been stealth. Right now, the British military could easily destroy us if they wish, but the only reason they haven't is because, as far as they know, we do not exist. But as we begin to restructure ourselves, this question of consuming has come up. Our factories begin to turn out smoke, people walk the streets, and our soldiers bumping into patrols of Commonwealth forces. We must do everything we can to make sure that our positions aren't given away. Tightening patrols, establishing curfews, and if we have to, assassinations. We must keep ourselves hidden at any cost. Let a revolution die before we can even begin. Washington Monument, that would be cool. Get more stability, which I do like. But you know, by ideology. The thing that glues all those Americans together is the Earth's Revolution. Butler are a common enemy? No. It's Jacobinism. An ideology created and maintained by the fairest of citizens that we seek not to exploit, not to cheat or nor destroy. That is what separates us from those in Philadelphia. The clan represents the people that yet they eagerly fill their pockets with coins supplied by industrial tycoons. Time to end the shame begins now. Let's raise a monument in the good faith of the Revolution in Libertyville for all to see. Yeah. Nice. Washington Monument. Even though our revolution seeks to fix the problems of the present to scare up a brighter future, we cannot forget the past. It was exclusive for victory and identity for our people. The First Continental Army was filled with many important figures, but none were as prominent as George Washington, the man who tried to lead us to freedom. Though he failed and the East remains under the yoke of British Dominion, we cannot forget his sacrifices. We laid the groundwork for a new revolution. As the ideals of liberty and freedom inspire us to this day, he shall be honored here and forevermore as a champion of the people. We acted during this focus, so yeah. Nice. Very cool. The truly American Revolution. We've done it, our territory is secure, the people will stand rally to the cause. We expanded and made use of our limited industry to provide us with the arms needed to fight, and our military stands ready for net war. Now let's prepare for the next chapter of our cause. We are surrounded by other smaller nations in this untamed and wild land. Some can be brought into the revolution with words, others with guns. Whatever the result, we must secure those resources that surround us and liberate the people under the thumb of their warlords. Then only then will we manifest our destiny to liberate the West and avenge the failure of 1776. We march into victory and freedom for the revolution. Nice. The All American uh, Reclamation Committee focus tree will load. We focus the different post unification trees. And a truly American revolution. Nice. I hate that you have to continually doing, do that for uh, this thing over here. That's really dumb. I don't like that. Well, arm XP, recovery rate, defense. Let's max out the arm XP, I guess. Get more stuff, I guess. Addiction Rebellion. Look at that, Free State's Alliance. What happens if they win? Like, for real, what happens if they do win?
Oh. Sounds have been broken by the cheerful yelling of drunken men and women throughout Libertyville. Butler had just announced that the Continental Army was now uh, ready to fulfill its great dream. Although a few uh, current concerned boys were raising some hesitation to be found ultimately all the Revolutionary Army agreed to follow Butler's call to march, and he's back to Philadelphia, but the memories of previous sacrifices were still laid heavy in the minds of many. Even Butler had some doubt of the potential success of the so-called American Revolution, the social, political, and economic disruption such a war would have would be on those within the loosely defined continental borders, and even those outside it. Will be felt for many generations to come, but even some couldn't doubt or couldn't crush uh, the hope Butler and his people had held on to. Sex and Petronas. Oh, look at this. Required garrisons to revolutionary with a heart. Oh, a lot of the bitter inside revolutions in various minor North American nations. Oh my god. War is a racket. The All American Reclamation Committee. Comrades, we've laid the foundation for future, and now we have a stand a pot and chance of freeing the East from the yoke of Britain. But we must not rest on our laurels and turn, to our gu turn our guns to the West. Vast lands of the Mojave and its surrounding territory has long been forgotten by much of the world. The workers live in poverty while their capitalistic rulers soak up every pound of wealth, trapping their citizens in this endless cycle of economic oppression. But no we have heard the cries. We must now, now free the workers from the Mojave from their chains. It's not going north anymore, huh? Savage Committee for the State Security. Our revolution now sits in a very fragile state. Our fresh ideas and government could easily fall from pressure from both internal and external. It would eventually liberate the rest of the world. We must ensure the security of the state and pure people at any cost to this end. The plan established committee for state security. The CSS will search for a nation for any signs of instability and danger to the state. From hidden imperial sympathizers to foreign agents seeking to infiltrate a government, all of these all of these must be identified and dealt with. CSS must be locked. Gets intel over the United Commonwealth. Okay. Interesting. Oh, it's just not connected. That's why it's so bad over there. Germany joins Britain. Seven Deadly Sins. Ooh. Proved national spirit while dealing with that degeneracy mechanic. Bypass the following focuses. Huh. Completely forward. We remove when the United Commonwealth is defeated. Six Emperor Tyrannus. Six percent recruitable population. We reveal ourselves and declare war on the United Commonwealth should we meet required conditions. Uh, in the past, we've achieved greater things despite our disadvantages. Our people are happier and healthier, and our industry is quite powerful despite how young our nation is. But while these all have been steps towards a brighter future, it's time we sped up. Now with another step, but a leap into the future. We're rapidly expanding industry and cities, expand infrastructure to facilitate further expansion. Before long, we'll rival even the largest cities of the Commonwealth. A truly American revolution. Turkey revolts. And Fredonia, New Zan. Uh, Fredonia is a nation of fools and misplaced theories of freedom. They may burn a bright light of opposition to the Commonwealth, but their beliefs will produce results like the Indians of old. Let us march north and bring the guiding light of revolution to their hearts, whether they want it or not. I believe so. New Dixie, nothing but a bunch of inbred racist freaks. New Zion, there's no greater. Do we get rid of New Zion? No, we do not. Uh, no greater victim of religious rot than the nation New Zion. Once proud American families turned mindless drones and servitude to not only a false god, but an inherently destructive social life. Husbands with numerous wives and children with numerous mothers, let us destroy this corrosive ideas once for all. How are we doing here? Doing okay? Oh shit, Nikes. Well, we better hurry up through this one then. Gadsville? Gadsdenville? Keep them all nice and busy. A bottle a day, even though Jacob was warned of the potential after and effects of alcoholism by his brother, and he helped pulling the man away from the bottle of rum was seemingly possible. Every day around late noon, Jacob would be disappearing in the local saloon for hours, only to emerge barely functional, walking corpse with a belly full of beer. Only on a few occasions did he spare the town to take a break from the poison that was ruining his life, although the whereabouts of Jacob during such times remained a mystery until one early Sunday morning. Down by a busy street, amongst a full array of continental troops returning from battle, could see Jacob, passing a few notes of a munitions guard in return for an unknown object. 
A later be revealed that Jacob had, by the way, managed to obtain a barely conceivable, conceivable image of his family back in Philadelphia. What strange Jacob had to pull just to get such an object through the United Commonwealth, let alone in continental hands like has been left up to speculation. Unfortunately, a few days later, Jacob has committed suicide after finding out from the continental troop station within the town that both his wife and two daughters had to make it through the chaos of the Trek West, and that more likely they'd have died during the Mississippi River crossing. Keep the doctors away, man. Keep them away. Go to Liberty. Liberty. Seven deadly sins, thus allows for debauchery and prostitution to corrupt our nation. Gluttony causes people to take more than they need, letting others starve. Greed is the very essence of imperialism. Sloth leads to complacency and thinking that everything should be handled by someone else. Wrath can only lead to crime and strife, and must be taken up arms against those who destroy our homes. Envy is the source of discrimination in classes' beliefs. And finally, pride, thinking that your contributions are somehow more valuable than others. All these plagues are upon our nation and our own people, and they must be torn down one by one. We did it. Go, 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 go. Oh, Corey, East Interior Territory. Let's integrate newly liberated lands into our revolutionary way of thinking, way, think, life and thinking. Must remind ourselves that this revolution is a global revolution as much as it is an American one. I'm sorry, my speech. I apologize. We have a lot of infantry coming now. Holy crap. And infantry rations, too. Algerhis. Nuremberg Proclamation, oh. Go here, we can circle them. Nice. Good. Throw them if you possibly can, that'd be very fine. Very nice. So us out here. Oh my god, please. Just kill them all. There you go. Greatly forward. Who oh, amongst you dare deny the revolution to steal mine? Question the foreman who has now eager yet concerned pool of fresh workers. From afar, a graze and forceful voice has been risen higher than the rest of the clamoring whispers that could be heard in front of the foreman. What exactly are we building here? We haven't had any food in your asking us to build you, you weep. Before the nameless voice could finish a loud clamoring and steel could be heard falling from its shelves deep into the heart of the factory, the atmosphere instantaneously became deathly silent. Enough building grit and courage to form a point into the now fallen steel. When the enemy comes, they'll find nothing out here but a few wooden walls and barely functioning machinery, and that's exactly what they expect. Nothing but a nation of fools and dreamers. We're all hungry, we all want to rest, but the revolution demands we push on, and so I ask, what will you become of those who haven't had the luxury to make it to this bastion of liberty this far west? Wasn't their efforts, was their efforts for nothing? Should we turn back? We've come this far. We have to keep going. Mobilize the workers. Total mobilization. Boy. About Russian industrial experts. Reimagine the American dream. Huh. Migrate farmers. Oh wow, civilian factory construction fee plus thirty percent. Um reimagine the American dream. America has inspired exploitive economic system held a great affinity towards a strong and healthy utopian standard of living. Even if the current dream is nowhere in sight for the average American, let us reinterpret this dream slightly so that it fits within the Jacobin ideology and makes it a reality for all Americans. Opium, alcohol, and other vices. Capitalism, uh, capitalist slavery uh, comes in many forms. From physical slavery with chains and locks to the financials with debts and loans, another method of capitalist control, uh, less mentioned but still instrumental in the continued operation of the working classes, is the slavery of consumption. These dirty luxuries of pornography, gambling, drink, and drugs keep the working man docile and easily controllable. Unwilling to rebel if it means his illusion or prosperity would be disrupted or his addictions cut off. It is for this reason that these vices must be eliminated. Completely eat the social revolution completely free the working classes from their chains. 
Effective immediately, all bars will be closed and transformed into workers' clubs. All non-industrial alcohol will be seized and destroyed. Only a wholesome and uh, work revolutionary workers' culture will be permitted to exist in these places. The following drug dens and brothels will be similarly closed and the clientele are arrested. There will be no tolerance for any resistance. These points must be flushed away for good. Thank you, beige boy. Thank you, beige. Commence. Oh. Both Butler and the Congress agree that a great council is befallen our nation. And while the state holds no sympathetic views towards religious folks, the state is sad that at the very least the sins that corrupt the dogma, or the corrupt dogma of Rome claimed to be attempting to destroy could serve as a good base on for a nation to build itself on. Convince the masses. We're very degenerative. Oh, Jesus. And we got him. Core, North Sierra Nevada. There you go, now it's all linked up. Beats Lens Falls, huh? Greater Dixie Republic. Oh, they're marching. That's cool. Lost Cause. Legacy of Slavery. Current days are 113, 114. Ah, we just gotta wait a couple years, so. I guess that makes sense. That's kinda cool. But I think we'll probably end the episode here. Uh, maybe we'll read one more. Builders of a Better Tomorrow. No. Not quite. Mobilize the workers. We could, but this seems a bit too much. Policy self reliance. Our territories do not have the large industry of far reaching trade networks of the United Commonwealth. Many still lives they uh, have for generations on family farms and never step foot in the town they are born. Although this leaves us as a massive disadvantage compared to the East, it does give us a unique opportunity to build a completely self sufficient economy. People encourage to continue homesteading and growing their gardens in a wider society. This culture of rugged self reliance will become our national mythos. Anything we can make locally, we will be produce, clothes, or ammo. Oh, look at this. Oh, that's, not, that's interesting. Property Ownership Act. Huh. Ooh, oh, the Common Union Act. Military Readiness Act. The Non Discrimination Act. The Equal Rewards Act. Well, let's do this one over here. The Patriotic Family Act. As a nation government organized, we must make sure things are stable, not just on a national level or even a local level, but a personal one. The families of our fair nation should be uniform and balanced. We'll create a similar series of incentive programs to encourage people to form so called nuclear families, consisting of just two parents and the children in a single house. A tight, small, tight-knit family promotes stability and helps to create a safe environment for our children. But of course, no family is perfect, and we must accept that sometimes parents are arguing and decide to go their separate ways. We must ensure that women are not only protected within their families, but have access to a divorce to allow the matter to be handled cleanly without discrimination. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. And we'll see what else we can do with the Second Continental Army. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.